Okay, guys, we're moving on to chapter four. And the first lesson here, 4-1, is called Using Graphs to Relate to Quantities. Um, chapter four is very different from chapter three. It's a lot less of solving math problems and more of just looking at graphs and interpreting graphs. So I like the stuff in chapter three a lot better because I'm the kind of person that likes to just solve problems. But if if, I mean, if that's the kind of person you are, you're probably not going to like chapter four as much. But just go with it. I mean, it's it's kind of tough at the beginning, but once you get used to the graphs, they're really not that bad. Okay, so here we have, and this is just from the getting ready box. This is on page 234. It says, the graphs below relate the height of water to the volume. Okay, uh, to the volume of the water in each container. Which graph goes with which container? Justify your reasoning. So, they both have the same variables. They both have volume. And they both have height. So anytime it asks you about the variables, those are just your labels on your x and your y axis. So if you had to guess which graph which went with which container, without knowing anything more about the graphs, which what do you think you would pair up? So if you look at this first graph, what it's saying is the volume is increasing the height is increasing at a pretty constant rate but then the height kind of like levels off a little bit okay that probably goes with this last container so the height it's increasing it's increasing it's increasing at a constant rate but then as it starts to fan out the height is still increasing but it's it's starting to get wider as it's also getting taller so the height isn't increasing at a constant rate anymore Okay, and then between the other two, the containers pretty much look the same, but for this last graph here, it looks like as the volume is increasing, the height is increasing, and it's getting a lot higher than the height on this graph. So in this graph, the height is also increasing, but it's at a much slower rate. So I would say this third graph here probably goes with the taller container, and this short graph goes with a shorter container. So definitely a, a lot more problem solving and thinking here in this chapter. There's a lot less of just solve the math problem. So that's kind of an idea of what we're getting into here. Okay, so next we have um, a different graph. It says, the graph shows the volume of air in a balloon as you blow it up until it pops. What are the variables? So I would sketch down this like real quick. I mean, just put the title air in the balloon your variables. So, first of all, it says what are the variables? Okay, time and volume. Those are your variables. Now, it's really easy when they give you a graph. What's going to be tough is when they don't give you the graph and you have to come up with the variables, but we'll work on that. And then it says describe how the variables are related at various points on the graph. Okay, so time. This can be anything you want, like uh, maybe say seconds. Okay, but there's no numbers down there, so you can't say at three seconds the volume was this. They just want to know in general. So, if this is you're putting air in the balloon, okay, this part right here, you would be blowing in air. Right, because as you blow in the air, the volume's going to increase. This part right here, what do you think's happening at this flat spot? Time is still increasing, but no more volume is going into the balloon. So at this point right here, you're probably taking a breath. Okay, and then you take a breath, and then you blow air back in. And then you take a breath. And then you blow air back in. And then you take a breath. And then you blow air back in. And right here, all of a sudden, in one second, the volume goes from whatever it is, and it doesn't matter what the number is, it goes from having a bunch of volume all the way down to zero. So right there, I would say the balloon popped. Okay, so do you see how the two variables are, 
you know, kind of working together. There's time, and over time, you're putting air in, you're taking a breath. You're putting air in, you're taking a breath. You're putting air in, you're taking a breath. And then you're finally blowing air in, and before you can take another breath, the balloon pops. Okay, so did we answer all the questions here? It says, what are the variables? That would be time and volume, and then describe how the variables are related at various points on the graph. And that's what we did by labeling it. Okay, so we have another one. What are the variables in each graph? Describe how the variables are related at various points on the graph. So this one is we have board length. Okay, so think of like a, a 2 by 4 or something, just a really long board. And again, it doesn't matter how long it is, it's just a long board. So our variables would be time and length. Variables are things that are changing. So time is changing. This could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It could be seconds. It could be minutes. But regardless, it's changing. And so is the board length. Okay, so you start up here with some specific length. And then in a very quick amount of time, like it goes straight down. So within one second, your board just became shorter. Let's say this was 10 centimeters. In one second, it dropped down to 8 centimeters. What do you think happened if in one second? I think they probably cut the board. They probably cut 2 centimeters off the board, or however many, but they cut the board. Okay, and then some more time went on. And so, so we're still at 8 centimeters, we're still at 8 centimeters. And then what happened right here? The, the length dropped down very drastically again. You probably cut more off the board. And then it was the same for a while, and then it dropped more drastically again. You cut more off the board. I don't know how familiar you are with using saws and stuff, but when you use a saw, you cut a piece off, and then you slide the board down, and you get it lined up, and then you cut another piece off, and then you slide the board down. So these pieces right here where the length wasn't changing was probably where they were sliding the board down along the saw, getting it lined up with the mark, and then you would you would cut it off. Okay, so uh, one more of these. It says, what are the variables in each graph? Describe how the variables are related. So variables, again, the things that are changing. So the minutes of a call and the cost. Those are your variables. Okay, it's just what's on your x-axis and your y-axis. That's what's changing. So June cell phone cost. Okay, so what's happening is whatever this cost is right here. And if it helps you to make up numbers, make up a number. So let's say it's, I don't know, $50. Okay, it's $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, $50. hit a certain amount of minutes. And then the cost starts going up gradually. So maybe at a hundred minutes. This is what happens on cell phone plans. It's something like you get so many minutes for a fixed rate of fifty dollars and then if you go over your minutes you start being charged a fee per each minute that you spend. So we got the variables. Um, again like when it says describe how the variables are related there's a lot of different interpretations of this. I would say that there's a fixed cost for a certain number of minutes. And then after that number, then the cost increases gradually each minute. Okay, so once you get to that maximum number of minutes on your plan, anytime you go over that, then your cost is going to gradually increase. Okay, so most of this is just figuring out how to read a graph, interpret the two different variables, and see how they're related to each other. Okay, um, and then the next part of the chapter is matching a table with the graph, and, and this is pretty easy. So it says, a band allowed fans to download its new video from its website. The table shows the total number of downloads after one, two, three, four and days. Which graph would represent the data shown in the table? So if you have days and you have total downloads, 
The first thing you want to make sure is that those are the same variables, but they all have day and they all have total downloads. Okay, so those are your variables. Now, notice on the graph there are no there are no numbers. So, what you want to look at is how much is it increasing from 36 to 1000 1011. Okay, so let's see how much did you go up by? I'm going to take 1011 minus 346. So, this was an increase of 665. Okay, and then from 1011 to 3455, that was an increase of 2444. And then from 3455 to 10426, that was an increase of 6971. All right, there's definitely one that we can eliminate because the total downloads are definitely going up. This one right here is saying that each day the total downloads is going down. Okay, so it's definitely not D. Um, A is showing you that each day the number of downloads is kind of going up by the same amount. Like if it makes a straight line, if it was more like plus 665, plus 665, plus 665, we might want to choose A. But because they're not going up by the same amount each time, it's probably not A. Okay, so here's what you have to think. As the days increased, did the total downloads kind of start quickly and then taper off or start slowly and then pick up more quickly at the end? I would say that towards the end, there was a much bigger gap between how many you downloaded on day three compared to how many you downloaded on day four. See, that's a much bigger gap right there then I don't even know if I can draw that in. The gap in the total downloads between 3 and 4. Okay, so I definitely think the answer for this one is B. And you don't have to copy that down. That one's just kind of looking at it. And we'll do, a, we'll do a bunch of those in class. And I'll give you this stuff on paper. But that's just kind of the look at. Okay, and one more. So this one, it says the table shows the amount of sunscreen left in a can based on the number of times the sunscreen has been used. So you can picture this. Like you have, you have a spray bottle of sunscreen. Every time you use it, the amount of sunscreen is going to go down each time. Okay, which graph could represent the data? So we start out at 5. Okay, so when we haven't used it at all, we have 5 ounces. So that's why they're all starting up here and that must represent five. Okay, what this graph is showing right here is that by the time you've sprayed it three times, you're already down to zero ounces. Well, on our last thing on our table, we're not down to zero ounces. We're hardly even down anything from five. So it's definitely not A because we're not going all the way down. And even B went awfully far down. I mean, if this is five, this has got to somewhere, be somewhere close to 1. And we're definitely not down by 1. See how C shows that you're going down just slightly each time? You're actually going down by 2. Well, point zero, point 0.2. You're going down by point 0.2. You're going down by point 0.2. You're going down by point 0.2. Very gradually. So the graph that matches with that table would be C. Okay. Um, and the next part... <clears throat> is um, sketching a graph. Now, you have to pretend that they only gave you this top part. Okay, I put the answer on there, so pretend that that picture isn't there. It says a model rocket rises quickly and then slows to a stop as, it fuels, as its fuel burns out. It begins to fall quickly until the parachute opens, after which it falls back slowly to Earth. What sketch of a graph could represent the height of the rocket during its flight? Okay, so this is the answer here. So let's go see. Let's go through how they did it. You have to have time. Okay, and as soon as it says the model rocket is rising quickly, that's how you know you're going to have to have some sort of height. So you have time on the x-axis and you have height on the y-axis. Okay, it rises quickly. So it obviously starts down here at zero. It rises quickly. So you draw some kind of line going up quickly as it's and then it slows to a stop as its fuel burns out 
So right here, it's rising quick quickly. Okay, but then it's still rising, but the slant kind of like flattens out a little bit. And right here, it stops. Like, have you ever seen a rocket go up and then it runs out of fuel? And then it's going to start coming back down. So right after it stops, it says it begins to fall quickly because it now has no fuel. It has nothing. It's just free falling. So we have a pretty steep line coming back down. And then the parachute opens. Okay, now when the parachute opens, if you're graphing height, the height is still going down, but it's going down at a much slower rate. Like, see how right in here, let's say this is sec time in seconds, okay? Maybe this is three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. Over two seconds, it dropped that much. Then over 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So over the next however many seconds, it's still falling, but you have to make your graph at more of an angle because it's falling a lot slowly. Okay, those are tough. We'll keep working on those, but that's just kind of the idea of what's happening there. Okay, and last one. This says, suppose you start to swing yourself on a playground swing. You move back and forth and swing higher in the air. Then you slowly swing to a stop. What sketch of a graph could represent how your height from the ground might change over time? So this right here, height from the ground over time. That's going to tell you your variables. Almost always, time is always on the x-axis. And we're going to get into like independent and dependent variables. But and then we're going to put height here. Okay, so now... You're, you're on a swing, so you're not really, your height isn't necessarily on the ground, you're, you're sitting on a swing, you're like up there, okay, you start to swing, so your height goes up, but think of yourself on this swing, you're going back and forth like this, and you're getting a little higher, and then a little higher, and then a little higher, and then a little higher, so every time you go back through this starting point, you get back down to this level right here. Right? So we go a little bit, we go a little higher, and then we're back down. And then we get a little more momentum. So we swing a little higher. But then when we go back down, like when we swing past the starting point, we're back down. And then we swing a little higher. Okay? And then it says, then you slowly swing to a stop. So now we have to ease ourselves back down. So we swing a little less high, a little less high a little less high, a little less high, and eventually we're at the, it's kind of like you flatline on that same line that you were on. Okay, that's all. We're doing um, lesson checks. So if you go to page um, 237, there's four, uh, four problems. I want you to try those so that you kind of have an idea whether you understood what was going on in this chapter or not try those, write them down. They're not going to be graded or anything, but those are the four problems that we're going to start with in class tomorrow. It'll kind of give you an idea if you actually know what we were going over in the video or not. Okay, that's it.